Good morning. Good morning. Good morning from Pinhole Quilting in the beautiful Worcestershire countryside near Pershaw. Pershaw Abbey, one of the dissolved monasteries. Just a mere fragment of its original size. But if you come to Pershaw, it's definitely worth taking a little bit of time to explore the beautiful surrounding area. Um, in fact, my brother was just recently in one of the only places that was not dissolved by Henry VIII. But talking of things that are tradition. Today is St. George's Day, the 23rd of April. Also, a day when traditionally you would pick your dandelions for your dandelion wine. A little known fact is the fact that Pete and I used to make, when we were younger, separately, before we knew each other, wine, and Pete's dad used to make country wine. I got him into wine, I got into wine making when Boots used to supply wine making supplies and um, at a very young age, at the age of 12, I made my own fermentation box with a little light bulb in there, set on a timer. My room used to smell rather like a brewery. I had five gallon jars of wine fermenting simultaneously with root vegetables and oranges and things. That would, uh, I didn't grow the vegetables um, myself, the gardener grew those. But uh, we used to have a fantastic supply of those. Anyway, dandelion wine, that would be rather nice. There's also the death of Shakespeare, he tells me. I didn't know that. Yes, Shakespeare died on St George's Day. Oh, poor Shakespeare. But he left a fantastic legacy, didn't he? So there we go. Welcome to Pinhole Quilting, full of useful anecdotes for your pub quiz. You never know when you might need those things. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, on the subject of winemaking, by the way, I used to have my dad pay for all of those winemaking accessories and then sell him back the bottles of wine at 50p each. Um, a useful thing to learn at the age of 12 that you could make money. So we're going to cover some interesting things, I think, today, because quite a lot of people, when they get into using long arms, find that using rulers is a lot easier on a long arm, whether it be a stand-up movable machine or because you've got extended throat space, um, one of the sit-down stationary machines. So we thought we'd just cover some of that. But also because one of our more recent um, customers um, had asked us to just cover this subject, saying, you know, well, what about saying, what's the difference between these two rulers? So thank you very much um, for that. Uh, you know who you are. The other thing is that we sent out an email this morning. We thought we would update you with some of the, the workshops um, that we've got coming up. Next, uh, week after next, the bank holiday week, we've got a couple of foundation workshops, which um, are, they're close to getting full. One of them was um, a little bit uh, light, so we wanted to make sure that people had really taken advantage of the free workshop that you get when you purchase a handy quilter from us. And it's a, it's a really good idea to invest in that education because that foundation literally is a hands-on workshop that comes with your machine. And we cover the bobbin, tension, thread theory, lots of things. And it really does help. We, we see that those people who come on that workshop progress much faster um, most of the time. I'm not saying all of the time, but most of the time than those people who don't. So um, we definitely recommend if you can come along on that. The next ones won't be till November because we've got other commitments and shows and it's summer. So we tend to do, uh, you know, because we've got Festival of Quilts uh, in the summer. So if you can, 4th or 5th of May, over the weekend following that, we've got uh, just a few places left, mostly um, Moxie and um, Sit Down Sweet Sixteen and Capri's left. But that doesn't really matter so much. What you're learning is the techniques, and you're going to be learning the muscle memory as well of stitching out. Um, you won't be able to stitch feathers by the end of two days' workshop with Linda, but you will have learnt the techniques and just being hands-on in the class and seeing that formation and having it corrected, there is no substitute for that. And the moxies have got this, the same sort of motion, even if you don't own a moxie, you might have a simply. Um, just, just come along, it'd be great to see you. So we hope that you can make it. We won't be um, doing another feathers class with, with Linda uh, for a while. So, the feather queen. The other one that we've got that we've just launched and the booking for that will be open on Saturday the 30th of April from 2 p.m. Um, Design, Draw and Stitch 5th to the 7th of July is a comprehensive ambassador event with Linda. Last year we ran a four-day event but we've stripped out that feathers workshop as a separate day um, and now we're doing it as a three-day. 
So it's really about the designing, the drawing, and stitching out a quarter of like a, so it's about a quarter of what we did last time, so that we can really focus on more of the stitching time, um, so that we, we don't spend as much time doing the drawing in the class. And we think that's going to be a, a really a popular class, so definitely one to look out for. Next week it'll be going up on our handyquilter.co.uk website, and you can check out more details um, obviously on there, but in the meantime we've got an event FAQs. Lots of information on there. We've also reserved accommodation at two venues, uh, both at the Vale and the Boot, which is a lovely pub, only um, just beyond where we live, actually. It's our local. Um, we really like it. They have some uh, lovely B&B. Uh, &B. Uh, we get good feedback from the Boot. So uh, we've reserved the places, so you'd be able to book directly with either of those venues. And um, we look forward to seeing you if you can make either of those. So... Um, and later in the year, we've got in September um, ambassador event with an international ambassador, and we'll be re um, releasing details of that in due course. We're just firming up details. Okay, Pete, I think that's it on our workshops. Is it not? There are a lot planned, aren't there? We've got so many workshops planned <laughs> for this year. Pete just went. Do so you many options. How many days? <laughs> we've got lots, uh, lots of commitments. Lots of commitments on our workshops. And we've also, of course, the other thing that we mentioned in that email was Festival of Quilts. Now, how we see our workshops is here, this is where we focus on workshops for, primarily for our existing customers, because here we've got the resources. We've got drawers full of the feet, we've got the pens, the pencils, the pounce, the everything in our Ikea drawers and stuff that we can just open it up. Linda says, oh, have you got those? Yes, we've got those. And they're just here. Have we got an iron? Yes, we've got the iron. We've got the ironing board, blah, 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 etc. cetera. Um, light boxes. Yes, we've got the light boxes. Can you imagine trying to do that at Festival of Quilts? No, you can't do it. You can't do it. So that's why we have taken the executive decision um, that the Festival of Quilts is primarily for those people who are either who are looking at a long arm and are seriously going, I want a bit more time before I make that huge decision, that considered purchase, um, which was a very strange accent, but we'll go, we'll go with it. Uh, that was kind of a mixture of Australian and Scottish, I think. But um, at least it, it, I didn't sort of migrate to the west of the country, which is usually what I do. So we, we've got two different classes. We've got long arms, explore the full potential. Now that's going to be an interesting one because there we look at some of the add-ons. So that's things like the, the rulers, it's going to be something on the pro stitcher, quilting from the back, etc., etc. We have got sound, haven't we? I didn't even check with you. <laughs> He's just going... Oh. I'd, have, I'd have mentioned if, there, if, if anybody had reported it. a he would problem. Have said, he would have said, nobody can hear you. He might have said, nobody can hear you. That's fine, but I don't think so. Um, so that one is explore the full potential. Um, it is really looking at some of those fantastic add-on things that we know that once you get into your long arm, you're going to love. But you do, it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. When you get a long arm, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and that is why we're doing that one. The introduction to long arm quilting is literally just, you know, let tell me about long arms and it's what we ran last year it was very very popular um, we know that uh, the feedback from it was excellent um, and i think that will be a great one if you are interested in getting a long arm if you are interested in upgrading explore the full potential would be a really good one because you'll be able to say you've had a stationary machine and you but you've never used a stand up explore the full potential would be great for that okay you can book online. One of, uh, one of them sold out in the first week. The space is left on um, the Thursday, um, Friday afternoon, uh, Saturday, and Sunday morning. Sunday mornings are always light. Um, I mean, we have the classroom there, so it's going to sit there. But uh, if you fancy coming along, Sunday morning would be the time to come along because you'll have a great old time. Um, and it's right when you come into the Festival of Quilts, the class room is just going to be right there. So you, you, can't, you won't be able to miss it. 
You, honestly, you won't be able to miss it. It's right there. It's going to be very exciting. What else? I can get on to really soon. Very, very soon. Anything else, Peter? I'm trying to do the uh, the live feed at the same time. I know, you're doing a lovely Let's job. Have a look. I'm just looking at my notes. No, no. So you talked about um, Festival of Quilts classes. Um, okay. Yes. Of course, you can come to the stand. You can come to the stand anywhere. You've got a big stand with lots of machines on it. All the yeah. machines will be on the stand. Yeah, and if, um, you haven't, if you haven't seen us on the Festival of Quilts website, do not worry, we will be there. Absolutely, yes. we're there. And we will also have a lot of our shop items at Festival this year. Yes. We, because of COVID, we couldn't take very much last year. Um, but So that'll be back to its full capacity this year. Um, if you are... glory. Those classes uh, that we are doing at Festival of yeah. Quilts, as Liz explained, are for you know, potential new long armors. Mm -hmm. um, might be worth just mentioning our pre-loved long arm service, because even if yes. you have a different brand of long arm, yes. uh, or you're looking to upgrade your machine, uh, we have now officially launched our pre-loved long arm service. You will yeah. know, many of you will know that we've been helping people sell their existing machines for That's some right. time. but. We now have a full scheme in place. Yes. So if you have um, an existing machine, you'll be able to, we can assist you in um, marketing it. And that has been a very successful, as Pete said, that's been a very successful service. It's something that Handy Quilt do in the States as well, but we've been doing it for longer than they have, I think. We started, we started doing it before they did, um, because we recognized how important it was to help facilitate that. Um, for our customers, because it, it really does help. You know, it's a it's a machine that is a specialist market, and we have access to those customers. For some people, they they want to you know get it into the handy quilt to long arm brand, and they don't necessarily want to buy new. So you know that's your market. And if you want to buy a new machine and upgrade to a lovely Amara but you've got a sweet 16, we can help facilitate that sale. If you've got another brand as well, we can help as well. So talk to us, give us, um, send us an email, tell us what you've got, and our pre-loved long arm service, uh, we will send you details, okay? So we have somebody coming to pick up one of those pre-loved machines on Monday, in fact. Yes. Um, and that didn't even get marketed, so no. this is why it's important for you to register your interest. We have several other machines, pre-loved machines for sale at the moment, and there's one that's also not been listed. It's going to be really competitively priced. That's a Simply 16 on a little foot frame in Cambridgeshire yeah. for somebody who's upgrading to an Amara. So get in touch. There we go. Get in touch. Put your name down on our list and Pete will make a note. All right, Peter. I'm saying Peter today. Did you know? I must have done something wrong. You've done everything right. Everything right. Now, we're going to talk about rulers. So we can use rulers, otherwise known as templates, on both the stand-up, movable, movable machines, as well as our sit-downs. I'm going to go and move over to the Capri. Don't worry. I know that there have been people who are sit-down customers. You're going, you are going to demonstrate it on the sit-down. Yes, don't worry. Eileen. It was Eileen. Uh, we will do that. So I've got, this was a piece of fabric that was already on the, Thing. I've been doing some samples, a bit of preparation over here. Uh, let's just describe what happens. So with a movable machine, you've got a very narrow free arm. Da -da -dum. Let's move this over here. So you need what is called a ruler base to increase the space around the free arm. People can't see Pete. So I'll show you this while Pete's coming over. I've just moved this to the side so that you can see. I've, we've left the, um, the, this paper on. I mean, these are demo ones, but it actually just, it doesn't make any difference, to be honest, to the use of it. But uh, it's just easier to see on the Facebook live feed by having this. It's actually it's clear, clear acrylic underneath. Yeah, yeah, that, I'm just see. feeling it better. So um, that is that. It's called a Steady Fit ruler base. Comes in a box like that most of the time. And there are different ones available for different stand-up machines. Yes, they fit around the free arm depending on the size of the machine. That's why they're different for different machines. Now, once you've got that on, 
you also change your foot over to the sure foot. So the regular foot um, is a sort of standard profile and uh, we have this deeper profile foot called the sure foot which means that you've got a nice purchase and nice reference of the quarter inch deep acrylic rulers against the edge of the foot. So this is the typical depth of a foot of a acrylic ruler that we use. Okay. And the reason is that if you use a normal rotary cutting ruler, the danger is, is that this is what's called a kinetic foot. It actually moves up and down as it's stitching. And what can happen is if you have it any thinner, this can go underneath or potentially over the top. Either way, it's bad. Either way, there is the potential for that needle to come down on top of the ruler. And I think we would all agree that would be a bad day for you and your machine. So we don't want that. So what we do is we put the sure foot on every time. And for those of you who've skip that step from time to time and go, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm in full control of my machine and made that error and then given us a call afterwards, you'll know that I'm talking the truth. So there are different rulers depending on how we're going to use them. And there are rulers that are solid, like for example, this arc set A just put this on top of here. You'll see it better against the white background. Right, so this arc set A actually comprises this little, tiny little one, a fifth one. Okay, so it's a little stack. There's a fifth tiny one, which I didn't get out of the pack. So something like this, is, they're solid. Okay, and then we've also got ones where, like this arc set B, where they, are, they have a hole in the center like this. Now, you have to cut the thread in order to use this one. I think it's actually more visible against the black fabric oh, this than fun. against that. Okay. That's you much have, better. Right. You have to cut the thread. In order to get to the center of this one, you have to lift it up and get into there in order to get to that section there. Some, some rulers have like a jigsaw and then the third type of ruler is one where you can put it over the foot and it doesn't matter if your thread is still attached because it literally will go over there like this. So you can get into the center because there's a little cutout. This could be a jigsaw piece. So in the same way, the thread doesn't have to be cut. But with something like this one, it does. Okay? So those are your three types of rulers. So we've got our foot, we've got our rulers. There are lots of different shapes, and you can look at those on our website. So this is, for example, a wave. Now we can use these with the sure foot. We can also use them with our echo feet. So Handy Quilter have echo feet, which are just the same in terms of they have this edge, which is deep enough to run along the edge of the rulers. This extends the way in which you can use things like waves and it changes to a certain degree depending on the type of the size of the echo foot you use. It changes the profile of some rulers. For example, this is the same wave and I've just drawn it with different echo feet. So you can see, right, this is, this is different for this one, really significantly different because I used the biggest foot. So, so I couldn't get in. One ruler and very different effects that you yeah. can get from a single ruler. Yeah, you can see this, this sort of distance here has changed. So if you use the echo feet, you can also therefore get different distances between sort of echoes of um, echoing, for example, applique or circles. Um, so there are different ways of using it. Okay. That's the echo feet. Now, how do you do? How do you do rulers? And why would you choose one ruler over another? Just want to just 
I just thought it would be useful to just pick these two, arc set A and arc set B. Just compare them. There are markings on these rulers. And now there are some little black markings. These were actually used on the last class. They're black markings, so you're not going to see them. Mm -hmm. You can, can't see the black markings. You can see my yellow tape. Okay, so I used yellow tape to do the diagrams on the on I can the right. see your black cross as well. Oh, you can? Okay, good. So this would be an intersection of where whoever used this ruler last wanted this point to intersect and change direction. So you might therefore flip it at that point and end up with something like this. So let me just show you how this was used. If we move over here, I used, because I knew I was going to be doing this demo, instead of using a black mark, I used the edge of this. Now, there's different tapes you can use. But I laid, this is a Cindy Needham stencil, which I pounced on, like this. And then I used the pounce chalk, which is this fine chalk powder, and I just rubbed it over. So that provides the base structure for yeah. you. Yeah. So that gave me my structure. And then I decided how big I wanted my petals to be. And I put, I decided this is where I'm going to use as my reference, this line here. And as again, somebody had used this one. Right. And then I laid this along that line. Here's my solid line. And there's my chalk line. And I laid that along there and I just stitched along here and then when I got to the end I just flipped it over and did that. So ways that you can use this ruler for example are using these reference lines to progress for cross hatching in that direction would of course give you equal like symmetrical designs but it's not going to be symmetrical in that direction. So contrast that to this ruler this ruler is arc set B, and it has symmetry in this direction and in this direction. Okay, so in this direction, you could easily progress up there and up there, and it has these reference lines there. So we can use this for things like borders in this direction, whereas you couldn't use this template, arc set A, to do a border design that sh anyway is shaped like this unless you flipped it, which is not very easy. So with this one, I can easily, without moving anything, just go up here and down. And then I can use, I've got three different levels of arc set B. Um, I've got this one and then this one. And so then these this are one. just pieces of painter's tape that Liz has applied yeah. to the ruler so you can change them for whatever project you're working yeah. on. I mean, painter's tape, but you know, there's on, there's the there's lots of different tapes. You know, there's the the, the um, rotary cutting tapes that you can get in fluorescent colours that you could mark, or you can just use those little black marks that we've got on the other rulers. So this gives you the ability to move because you've got these very useful etched lines. You can just move parallel to the previous ones, and if you're if you move down you will get a different effect than if you move down to a different part of this and stitch that. Okay, so I, I think it's just useful to know that that is symmetrical in both directions, whereas arc set A isn't. This gives you a very broad circle of two different diameters, whereas that is identical diameter circles. That's your main difference with those. And we would typically use this a lot for borders. Um, I, hope that's, I hope that's helpful. Well, Ma Marianne got... says that she's learned something every time we broadcast. So she's okay. clearly learned something from oh, that. Good. And on here as well, we've got our 45 degree lines, which is very, again, very useful for when you're trying to intersect for th with things and to make sure that everything is lined up. You, you, do, you don't realize how useful these reference lines are. I can only say use them. <laughs> there, is no, there is no substitute 
other than getting a ruler, getting it out the box, and being like a big kid, and just going, I mean, literally, that, these, these, um, these rulers have things printed on the back where it shows you, what should I do with it? There it is. On the back of here, it shows you what you can do. It's got some examples, okay? So each of the handy quarter rulers has a similar card in it that just gives some initial design ideas. Yeah. Like this. Yeah, exactly. And then some of the newer ones, which are part of the ruler of the month, have actually got videos. Uh, which show how to use them. So we've put links to those videos on our website, on EKM, and within the description, you can go down, play the video. And that gives you a much better sense of whether it's going to be the ruler for you or not. Now this, for example, once I've created my ruler, my space for my ruler, now I can just fill it with feathers. I did this yesterday, and I did my little feather work. So that's nice. I was quite pleased with that. Yeah. So that would be typically how you would use that. Or, so I didn't have to do feathers in there, obviously, but that gives me a lovely space that I can then fill, or I could have done an, another overlapping one because I could have used this. Yeah, I could have gone up the middle there and joined this. I could have used my 45 degree um, line to, and I could have just, or I could have put another ruler line in there, couldn't I? with my long ruler. When people ask what ruler to get next, well, we usually say start off with the handy versatile. Start with this one. This is a great starting ruler. It has the four inch, um, what's it three inch? Where's that? I don't know what it is. Don't know. It's a semicircle. It's anyway, a semicircle. that's a good question, isn't it? That looks like three inches to me. I said four inches. It actually, looks Look, like you've got a tape measure on oh. the back here. Oh, by the way, these uh, these tape measures are back in stock. Oh yeah, it'll create four. It's not. It'll create a four inch because um, we've got Be, quarter inch. Yes, design. because of the quarter inch. Because I'm yes. looking at it, thinking that's definitely not four inch. Four inches. Duh. Okay. Now, when you use this. That's another thing about using rulers, that we know that we're always a quarter of an inch either side of it. And those little ears are very useful. This is a nice gentle arc. We've got our straight line and we've got our little V that we can use for like a, a nice progression or for going around corners. And again, it's got etch lines. Always use it with the etch lines at the, on the underside. Otherwise, you get the effect of parallax. If you flip it over, do one bit this way, then one bit this way, you're not going to be accurate. Also, always use handy grip. So let's just do a quick demo. I'm going to do a demo here using... I'm going to put another... Yeah, so always have the etch lines of the ruler against the fabric yep. on the underside of the ruler. Good morning, Viv. Doesn't matter that you're late, you can always catch up later. <laughs> yeah, we're not checking people in. This is not like a school register. Wait, I'm still waiting to hear from you as to whether you're coming for your demo or not. Oh, is this the trains? Yes, 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 yes. Trains. Oh. We've got a lovely new station, but that's, that's, it still can take a very long time to come from other parts of the country to here, even though country. we're in the middle of, the, uh, middle of England. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there with transportation or 4G signals, eh, Pete? Let's not go there. I think for beginners with rulers, one of the things that it takes them a while to get used to is that distance between where the needle is and where the yeah, ruler is. Exactly. Um, again, the, the etch lines are your friend here, yeah. because using this straight line, for instance, on the versatile ruler, on the ear here, the little line here is where your, uh, your actual needle line will be. So your straight line will go between the little etch here and the little etch line here. So with the foot against this side of the ruler, your line's going to be a quarter of an inch away, and this, these lines help you line up, either with an existing line um, or one that you've previously stitched. Yeah, now settings, settings-wise, uh, I've got this set to 11 stitches per inch, and I've got it on uh, 75 in, in cruise setting. So this just means that the needle is coming out of the work uh, when I press start. 
So it's, I'm not sort of forcing the needle against the, the fabric, and I've got it set so that the needle will set in the down position. What I just did, and what I was saying um, before I got slightly distracted by the fact I couldn't remember whether that was a four inch circle or not, uh, is the fact that after this ruler here, there are lots of different ways you can go, but I really love the three by 12. Well, there is a skinny, which is nice too. Which is two by 10, which two I prefer. Ten. Yeah, Peter prefers that. But I like this because, for example, with this Cindy Needham, it's not quite big enough for what I wanted. I'm happy that I've got the start of this, but, but this actually needed to be slightly longer. So I've just used my three by 12 just to extend that. I mean, you could have used any ruler for that, obviously, but it's handy to have. It's also really good for borders because when you're doing borders, you actually need this bit here. <clears throat> if you've got, imagine you've got a deep border, you actually need that. Imagine that was the top of your border. You need to run that along the parallel bit of your border. And it's really hard to do if you've not got a long enough ruler. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Fair point. Yeah. It's worth pointing out with that ruler, Liz, as well. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we suggest with the Studio 2 frame that people use the clear view oh, yes. setting. Good point, Pete. Which is the same as the low position on the loft frame. This is why. This is so why. In the clear view position, this top bar here means that there is no obstruction of the ruler. And it's also good for little people. I put myself in that category. It's, it's made it a lot easier because it used to be that you had a bar here and you never really felt like you were very close. And we don't have a lot to work with. I mean, you know, this is it. This is everything. You know, I'm not five, I'm not Linda Jackson. I'm not, I'm not that tall person. Um, and uh, it meant that I was always having to go over the bar and then working here. By the way, when you're doing ruler work, I, I'm only working on, because I wanted to show you both of these things, I'm working on this. I wouldn't be working on this over there. I would prefer to work in the first half to a third of my quilting frame. I don't really want to be working over there. So get it as far forward as you can as well. So what we do, we don't want to put too much downward pressure because you know, if you're pushing down too much, you're actually forcing it against yourself. You're pushing down on the table that's supposed to be moving. I'm now lining up that solid line that I've marked with my um, paper. I'm going to come the other side here. Okay. Oh, and on the Amara, by the way, this handle I would always have up, but I could put this one down a bit lower. And I could also, pro and I could program this diamond key here so that I had a needle up, needle down. Yeah, because with the stand up, your left hand is used in holding the ruler. It's a real advantage to be able to program that right hand button yeah. in a different way. Yeah. As you get close to where you started, you're going to eyeball it and just make sure that you're going to hit where you started from. Okay. And then on this one, I've got a little micro tile. Bring needle up, pull down, go away. Come back, needle down, and up, and away you go. Now you can trim that. There you go. Uh, Lindsay, that tape measure, I'll send you uh, details. I can't remember what it's called on our website. But good news, Lindsay, we're hoping to switch on shipments to Switzerland this oh, week. Yes. So you'll be able to order online. Yep. So we're testing a few countries um, in the EU to restart shipments. And Switzerland is going to be one of the first on the list. Yeah, we thought of you, Lindsay, when we were thinking about that. Can I just say that? You were in our minds. Liz actually said, I think Lindsay might be interested in ordering from <laughs> I us. I did. I thought of you. Now, here's another thing that you can do. Um, now, how, how well I can do this live on Facebook, uh, we'll see. You see, I did a little bit of practice over there. Now, this is something that takes a little bit of practice, and I don't do 
Can you imagine this, you know, doing pinhole quilting takes up quite a bit of time. So I'm not doing this. I'm not a professional long arm quilter, but I'm going to show you the technique and um, you've got to practice it. What, I'm, what I want to do is echo around. My, these aren't my feathers. This was done on a class. Um, so just, just to say, lovely, whoever did them, lovely. But this is what I want to echo. And I just had a little practice up here. What you can do, either using this kind of the crosshatch one that I've got here, but certainly a versatile and flipped over so that the handy grip, which is quite rough and is normally what you use to grip, I'm going to flip it over. I'm not using the etch line, so it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to use it to just sort of guide me around either an applique or in this case, the feathers. So you would use that rather than the notch that's on the yeah, ruler for that purpose, Liz? Yeah, because I find the notch clatters too much. Okay. So, and this rolls. But just to explain, that's why there is a oh, notch on there. Yeah, there's a notch. Uh, one's bigger than the other. It's that one that is supposed to be the handy quilt. So one. the purpose is to guide you around like this. Yeah. You see, it's okay. It just provides a bit of extra control yeah. when you're doing... But personally, I like the way that this one rolls around on. I can't quite see where I'm going because I'm, I need to be standing where you are. Yes, I'm, I'm getting in your way here. Liz is getting her excuses in early here. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I need to be standing over there where you are. Yeah, Helen says she uses the notch, but you know, different people. Yeah. There aren't any rules. You can use whatever works best. There we go. Okay, so there's a bit of echoing. Yeah. Just using a ruler to help guide you. And so you could do the same with the crosshatch. And by the way, the cross curve crosshatch ruler is, is really nice. It has, um, I haven't taken the cover off this, but it has this line up the middle. And that is where, when we're doing crosshatching and just sort of moving up and then going the opposite direction it creates a nice crosshatch effect that just that even just that one etch line and the fact that you've <laughs> it's very clever they've done these dash lines you have a reference that is correct some whoever put that together knew what they were doing it's a lovely ruler that it one is. I think. and you you it's it's really weird but it's not going to be Every time you sew, it's not going to be exactly a quarter of an inch from the previous one. It's hard to explain, but you'll know when you use it why it works. Yes. Okay. So again, for beginners with rulers, they wonder about those lines, oh, but they're just, there for a I've really good purpose. The down. lines are incredibly useful. Okay. Right. Well, that was the end of the demo, and I've just managed to break the thread. Congratulations. <laughs> I pulled down on it. Okay. So. We will go and do a sit down. If people are interested in a sit down, that would be, I'll take the coffee. It's a little cold, but you know I drink cold coffee. Over here, what I wanted to demo over here was the uh, Capri. We have um, obviously got new Capris, got lovely new Capris, but we also got uh, a lovely second user Capri, which is an absolute bargain at the moment. And if anybody's interested in a sit down, was maybe thinking about a Sweet 16, definitely look at our second user uh, Capri because uh, it's on our website. It's actually listed on the website and it will be uh, something that you should give us a call or an email about because it is actually priced less than a brand new Sweet 16 and it comes with a side table and it's, um, I think it's still less than a year old, isn't it? So it's still got yeah. four years warranty. Plus we've got our spring offers at the moment. So all good reasons to uh, talk to us about your long arm quilting at the moment. Now, what I wanted to do was just show you the, the whole point about this is always test out your stitches. I've just picked this machine up. So can you turn the brightness down a bit on that machine, Liz? Mm -hmm. That will make it easier, I think, for the camera. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's on full. How's that? Yeah. Oh, think... that's maybe a bit too much. Yeah. I might have to just. Still need to see a bit. 
that okay? That's better. Okay. Right. Just want to just check that this is uh, stitching okay. Now, because I've put a new bobbin in. I am in regulated mode, 12 stitches per inch, cruise. I'm just going to do ruler work, so I'm going to go down to 75 stitches. Exactly the same as the other setting. And it's picking up on the magic eye. Just going to check that all looks hunky dory. A little bit more tension. Because I could see some of my top thread on the bottom. Five minutes more and I'm done. Whoops. Okay. There we go. See, that's just a tension check. You do that every time, it just becomes second nature. And that's what we teach on the workshop, on our foundation workshop. That's the kind of thing that we do. Let's just show you. This is the Blue Peter. Here's the one I did earlier. This is a using a ruler to create the spine. That was done using this little wave F, which is a lovely little ruler. And I think it's a really nice one for the sweets and capris to create things like this feather. Lovely for a little border. That is quite an aggressive, should we say aggressive curve. You get into a lot more difficulties with that one. But I can see how you could be more creative with that in some ways. Yeah, but feathers you get... You... Not for feathers, no. I mean, in, no. in other ways. Yes. Oh yeah, true. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, it's quite, um, quite, I think it's quite 60s, that. Quite retro, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think we had some wallpaper like that in orange, either orange <laughs> or green. Orange and brown was the favourite in the early 70s, it was, I think, it was. wasn't it? Yes. It was. So, Isn't it back in fashion? It is back in fashion. We see things, you know, should have kept those trousers and that jacket. Not that we're the arbiters we of fashion, of particularly. <laughs> oh dear. No, we're definitely not the arbiters of fashion. Just as you get rid of that lovely brown check jacket put, Pete, they just come back in. Would you believe it? <laughs> I never had one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I must be thinking of my dad. Oh, shocking things. Right. So what I would do is um, just pick up my bobbin thread. Now with this, I use one sweet spot. So just secure that. So again, of course, Liz has got the sure foot on this machine as well. Yes. Always with rulers. Now, you might wish to go into pop up a second and get my long ruler because I've got no reference at all. And I don't want to. No, on a plain piece of fabric, you've got nothing to work <laughs> yeah. with, have you? No. So I did use, oh yeah, that's what I thought. I basically, yeah, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have a wonky feather. If I can avoid it. Uh, so that would be a lot. has got um, a needle stop point on this. It's it just useful to have that nice um, point at which you stop. Okay. <clears throat> so Lindsay, that tape is called the center measuring tape for your stand-up frame for the bar at the back. Very useful. So you're using one yeah. of the sweet spots one with its sweet spots. grippy underside. Yeah, and I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> Make sure this is all piled up. <clears throat> of course, I did my... Te my, my te now, that was something. I did my test on different fabric. Uh-huh. 
beginner's mistake. Yeah, I've just adjusted my tension because it's not quite as good as I wanted. I literally just did that. is my my little curve so now as long as I didn't I think it just caught okay so now I can go back and I can do a feather the opposite direction I prefer if I've got the other paddle here the paddle Whoops. So now, now I've finished my ruler work, I will go back into a more normal setting of my feathers. Using my paddles. So that's given me a nice stem on which I can then do. Louise, you will definitely improve your feathers on Linda's class. Yeah. Linda is such a good teacher of feathers. She is. She it is. still takes practice, of course, but she'll give you yeah. all sorts of tips and uh, yeah. different feathers. Um, Sally Mottram says she finds it difficult to use rulers with her sweet 16 with the true stitch because she hasn't got enough hands. Um, you I don't, don't know if you've got any tips on that, Liz. Um, I, if I had the true stitch, I um, don't think we've got one out here, have we? Oh, is one over there? I'll just show. I, it's not well, rigged up, but if I just have it in my hand. I have it with the magnet on top. Like that. Let me just bring this up. <clears throat> That's a very good point, Tricia, with the um, insight table. Yeah. Uh, she finds the paddles really useful for keeping the fabric flat, flat. on either side. Yes. So that the sensors are always in contact with the fabric. Yes. And the machine doesn't of, get confused. A bit of light coming in, I find. The, the machine can get confused. I do find that if there's side light, Particularly with black fabric, with very black fabric, if it suddenly gets some light. Now, with this, Sally, what I tend to do... So the insight table that Liz is using here with the Capri oh, has yeah. the sensors built in for stitch regulation. Yep. And what it's a good idea to do, and Trisha, I know that you'll have done this, is when you're at the edge like this, is sewing on an extra piece of fabric or basting on an extra piece of fabric so that you've got that extra piece when you're working right up to the edge of your quilt. Because otherwise you don't have 
um, so that you can't cover the sensors over. Those are the sensors. With True Stitch Sally, what you need is, well, what I would suggest is this. Just put that back there. If you put that underneath, and also quilt management, get it all up there. Don't have it all down here. That's another thing. Use the magnet. Yeah. And if I was doing this bit here, if I was using a ditch ruler or a straight ruler, I would be doing this like this, and I hold the magnet like that and go like this. And I use the magnet. So you wouldn't use the... I wouldn't, no, because it's kind of gripping the fabric. Yeah. I sort of put my hand on it like that. It sort of holds it. I don't think I would use the sure, the, the, the grips. The grips at that point. No. I mean, I've done both. But, yeah. The closer you have this to the work, the better. Yeah. I've done both. See what you prefer. Um, I like having my hand on the magnet. Personally. That feels the most intuitive to me. But to be honest, I've not used True Stitch as much since we got these. So I'm probably not, you know... Uh, it's difficult to say. And also, if you're using, I'm just looking over there, Pete, at the jade and the, I've, the jade spin effects and the jade spinning wheel. I'm just wondering, you know, when you're using like a spinning one that you're spinning around from the center, which one is the better one to use for those sort of rulers? It's, again, that's quite, these ones have got like a pin in the center. Difficult to say. I think you'd use, I use different things in different situations. I'm, go I'm going to say that there isn't a hard and fast rule. I sometimes swap. I swap between, hey, I swap between the paddles and the sweet spots on a regular basis. Because like Trisha, I love the fact that these paddles give me such a nice flat area. I, found these, I find these the best for doing like a flat spot for my feathers. Without a doubt, that, that gives me the best control for feathers. You get both hands operating together. Whereas the sweet spots, you tend to find there's a little bit of play between the two hands. I hope that's helped. Okay, we've been on for ages today, Pete. We've done lots on rulers. We spend, a, I mean, we do this on our foundation workshop and you know, there's only a certain amount of things we can cover in the foundation workshop, but this is the kind of thing we do. Um, because rulers are such an important part of stabilizing the quilt, creating spaces on the quilt um, that you then subsequently can, can fill. Um, it's all important stuff. So there we go. All right. Any questions, Pete? Any more <coughs> points? Oh, there's quite a technical question from Joe here. I don't know if you'd know the answer to this, because surely it depends on how you want to do it. But yeah. uh, Joe asks, how would you quilt a kaleidoscope quilt with the six triangles? Which rulers would you use? Were well, you coming into the center? Yeah, where there's a lot of bulk in the center as well. I think that's a... <laughs> Which Joe is it? Joe level. Yeah, I th that's a long arm learning curve question, Joe. Yeah, yes, I think. <laughs> Ask, ask a number of different experienced ruler users. They might have some suggestions yeah. for you. Yeah. That's, that's where long arm learning curve is, is yeah. great. So she says she's thinking of using a circle to, avo to avoid the bulk. So exactly that, that that's yeah. That's why I was asking. Yeah, I have done, um, I've actually got, I don't, well, I haven't got it out. It's easy to find. But, um, you know, I've got a, a kaleidoscope with the eight, bits coming into the center and you know you always get that bit in the middle where you sort of want to get you get a hammer knock it down um and and you know when you're gosh it's about, i'm just going to say how how good is your center and maybe if you, you know if you could have your time again would you've done it so that all everything just was flat <laughs> um maybe if that were possible um because that does make such a difference. You know, there are techniques for getting it flatter. 
but there's no way you can avoid it. It will always have a whole load of fabric in the center. Um, literally, bashing it can help. I know people who've bashed. Okay. It's not just urban myth. <laughs> Final point then, Liz. Huh? Special offer on oh, rulers. Special offer on rulers, people. <laughs> Pete's had to remind me. We've got a 15% discount on rulers. So From these now. are some of our rulers. We've got an equal I'm number to test that, Pete. on the other side. I got that. I better go and test it. So our ruler stock are quite good at the moment. Yes. And 15% off this week. Until next week. Midday next week. Okay. Think of this. So go forth and play with rulers. That's why we've done this session. To inform you and educate you and hopefully entice you. How about that? Sounds good. Fantastic. Have a great week, everybody, and happy quilting. See you next week.